finally got round to reading this essay today by George Lakoff, uh, when he talks about the relationship between metaphor and dreams. I knew he'd written about this, but I hadn't. Uh, I just hadn't had time to read this particular essay. Uh, and it was really interesting, actually. There were some very interesting things about it. Uh, it was not just about dreams. It was also com com comparing and contrasting uh, a kind of cognitive science approach to cognition with Freudian and psychoanalytic approaches to mental life, if you like. Uh, and what it does a number of things. One of the things it does is distinguish between the Freudian or the psychoanalytic unconscious and what Lakoff referred to as the cognitive unconscious, which I've seen elsewhere as being referred to as just non-conscious processing or non-conscious cognition. In that distinction, the, uh, the Freudian unconscious the psychoanalytic unconscious is very much a place of repression. It's a kind of it's conceived of as a kind of dark part of the mind where unwanted uh, thoughts, um, kind of uh, ideas and concepts which would be kind of psychically damaging if we were able to think them in the full light of consciousness, where those kind of thoughts can be buried. So a lot of stuff to do with a lot of stuff to do with sexuality, a lot of stuff to do with violence, uh, a lot of stuff to do with incest, those kinds of uh, uh, troubling thoughts would be repressed into the unconscious in Freud. And it's kind of a hydraulic model where there's some kind of pressure is forcing this stuff down into a kind of stump at the bottom of the unconscious. The the contrast to that in Lakoff, at least, is the uh, is, as I say, the cognitive unconscious, uh, an area of non-conscious processing, which he doesn't really think of as a space, actually. He doesn't talk about it in terms of it being a lower part of the mind. There's no kind of appeal to depth in this. It's just processing, cognitive processing that's going on that's not part of our conscious awareness. And for Lakoff, it has, it's much less dramatic. There's none of that kind of grand guignol that you find in Freud. There's no... Uh, it's much more uh, sedate, if you like, or bland, or routine, pardon me, or everyday. Much more normal kind of processing. So all of the, all of the kind of bodily functions that we're not aware of are part of, of the unconscious of unconscious, but also all of the kind of mental processes that we, uh, that we just use in an ordinary everyday life to make sense of things are also an intimate part of that. So, uh, so, so things like the stuff I've mentioned before on this, the processes by which we bind different stimuli together, like the stimuli from the right and left eye, we bind that together in a particular way to create depth perception. We're not conscious of that binding, we're not conscious of the inputs to right and left eye, we're just conscious of depth. Those separate sensory inputs are part of non-conscious, uh, of the non-conscious cognitive unconscious. But also, uh, and slightly more elevated from that, and more complex from that, are things like uh, metaphor and metonymy. And Lakoff does a really nice uh, kind of one-to-one -one comparison between some of the terms that are in psychoanalysis, like displacement, uh, like repression, and how those things feature within cognitive sciences and the and conceptual metaphor theory. So metaphor and metonymy and uh, cognitive blends, irony, those, uh, those are presented as cognitive functions, kind of information processing strategies, if you like, which take the data from other parts of our mentation, our irradiation, our perception, and do stuff with it and to turn it into sense. Uh, but all of that happens non-consciously. So we're not aware of the fact we're using conga. We're not aware of the fact we're using metaphors or, or most of the time. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about a bit of that conceptual metaphor theory, which I won't I won't expound on here again. Cause I've talked about that many times. But one of the uh, the novel things I found out about this was to do with the idea of um, I can't remember if you used this phrase or not, but kind of repressed metaphors. Uh, the, the question with, the, with this whole idea is that um, some metaphors, or most metaphors, appear, or the, the evidence for these things appearing as part of cognition is found uh, in routine expression. So the language we use 
just normal speech, but also other kinds of things like gestures and images and so on. These kind of betray the structure of the metaphorical processes that we're using in order to make sense of the otherwise incomprehensible. But he says certain things don't appear they are uh, in within speech. They probably structure metaphor, they probably structure cognition through metaphor. But we repress the we repress the them at a certain point until they don't find their way into speech. And he gives the example of this metaphor of um, it was a, it's an odd one, I haven't come across it before, in which uh, testicles are understood as eyes. So, uh, so seeing as it's, oh, it's, it's, uh, let me get this right. Yeah, something like sexual potency is understood metaphorically as a form of seeing, which doesn't appear in any metaphor structure in language at all, but does appear in quite odd places, like it appears in, in the story of Oedipus, who, uh, after finding that he's had sex with his own mother, he doesn't cut his testicles off, he puts his eyes out, he blinds himself. So there's a, a kind of, uh, well, I think Freud would say it's a displacement, but in this particular sense, it's an kind of application of metaphor. And those things, according to Lakov, are also what we're finding in, in dreams. So uh, the language of the dream is partly the language of, of obvious metaphor. I, uh, Come on, you see. But it's also partly the uh, making use of these suppressed or buried or hidden uh, hidden metaphors. Hi there. I'm not quite sure what I think about that yet. I mean, I, the problem I have with it is the same problem I have with with the Freudian notion of repression. By its very nature. It's, it, it, it refuses to provide evidence because obviously if something is capable of emerging into consciousness then by definition it's not repressed uh, and so there's, there's no you can't get to the evidence for the repression I think the same is probably true for the idea of repressed metaphors you can kind of make up uh, hypotheses or stories about how these things are working but again, you can only see them when they emerge. You only know, at least that you do know, you can only know that uh, sexual potency and seeing have this metaphorical link. Testicles and eyes have this kind of link, metaphor through, through metaphor. You only know that when it shows itself in stories like Oedipus or in dreams. Uh, in which case, how repressed was it in the first place? I don't know. It's, it's interesting. There's something, there's something interesting going on there. I guess it would need a lot of uh, research and anal dream analysis. I guess. I don't know quite how that would work, but I'm imagining you would need quite a lot of that. Uh, and probably some textual analysis to do with pulling out metaphors of that nature uh, that appear not on the surface of language in the form of idioms and, and obvious phrases, clearly almost overt metaphors, but a kind of more uh, subtle. Maybe there's a way of attacking it that way. Anyway, it's a great article, but uh, a particular one on metaphor and dreams.